Welcome to the webinar. We're going to look at using Digimap data with CAD today. Uh, my name is Ian Holmes. I'm joined by my colleague Guy McGarver. Uh, we're both part of the support team here at Adena, working primarily on the Digimap service. Um, after the webinar, we'll send you a link to a recording. We're recording this webinar, so it'll go on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We'll also send you links to the slides, uh, a transcript of any Q&A that come in, and also a feedback form, um, which is always useful if you could fill that one in. So just a little uh, high-level view of what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to look at three separate areas. So the data sets that are available in Digimap in CAD format, how to get hold of that data, looking at data download, and the final part is how to use some of that data in the AutoCAD suite of products. So first things first, so the data available in CAD format. There's a whole bunch of data that you can get out of Digimap in native CAD format. Some of it we do translations to make it available in native CAD format. Some of it is provided by the different data suppliers in, in CAD-friendly format. So we're primarily looking at Ordnance Survey data today, but I'll also mention some of the other products as well. So there's a table here listing some of the vector data sets that you can get hold of from Digimap in CAD formats. And the right-hand column there lists the formats that they're provided in. There is a link at the bottom of this page to uh, one of our help pages, um, which lists all the Ordnance Survey data sets and all the formats that they're available in. So the products are down the left-hand side here and the formats that you can get hold of the data across the top. So DWG, DXF, um, ASC, and things like TIFF, these are all CAD uh, formats. So you can scroll down this list and see which products are available in which of the formats. So just to mention some of these in a little bit more detail um, and talk about why you might want to use them. So first one I want to talk about is master map topography layer. This is the most detailed mapping that you can get from the Ordnance Survey of Great Britain. Um, it's a fully polygonized data set, covers a whole country, and really it's concerned with what the features are out on the ground. So is it a building, is it a road, is it a pavement? Um, they're not really concerned with what type of feature they are. So there's no distinction if it's a commercial property or residential property, or if it's an A road, B road, something like that. It's just classed as a building or a road. <coughs> uh, this data is available in two versions, which you can look at in Rome and also download through data download. One of them is a full color version, which is what you can see on your screen here. Uh, the other version is what we call plan or outline style, which is more of a, a line work style. So um, there's no um, polygon fills in the plan or outline style. It's just looking at the outlines of features. So buildings are drawn with a, a red outline. Other things have a black outline. So the next data set I wanted to quickly talk about is the building height attribute data set. Um, this is a, a data set released by Ordnance Survey back in March 2014, and it was last updated last October. It's still a beta product, so um, it may well have errors in it. Uh, there's no guarantee that it's error-free. And it's also not got complete coverage across the country. So major towns and cities is where the data has been focused. But Ordnance Survey do publish a coverage map that shows the areas of this data. So if I just flip back to my browser window, so this is the coverage map for building height attribute data. So you can see in the southeast of the country, it's very good coverage, but it is patchy. There are holes in this data. As you go further north uh, and into Scotland, the data gets even more patchy. So it's, it's really focused around major built-up areas at the moment, but uh, the coverage in, uh, in England is, and Wales is really quite good. So the idea, as, as we understand it, Ordnance Survey will be including this as part of master map topography layer in the future, but at the moment it's supplied as a separate data set, and we do some work to convert that into um, CAD-friendly formats, so it, we make it available in DWG format, which is an, a native drawing format for AutoCAD. And again, it's a really useful product, so when combined with the master map topography layer that we just looked at, the, the two data sets um, work together. Um, it's the same building polygons from that data set, and then here they've got a height or well, a number of height attributes so for any 3d modeling applications these two are really good data sets in terms of the height information that gets supplied with building height attribute data there are a number of, um, of different attributes so the there's three absolute heights absolute height minimum which is the base of the building absolute height two which is the effectively the height of the eaves of the building 
an absolute height max, which is the very top feature of that building. So be it a chimney pot, uh, a roof apex, something like that. And from those three absolute heights, they've derived two relative heights. So the relative height from the base to the eaves and the relative height from the base to the, the very top of the building. All the attributes are included as X data. So if you're familiar with the CAD data model, they go as, as X data. And you do need to use these with a, a digital terrain model or surface um, because otherwise the buildings will be floating in midair. So when we created this data in DWG format, we used the absolute H min, so the base of the building. That's the, the base of the feature in the uh, DWG data set. So it's a 3D data set. And effectively, if you were to just view that data on its own, the buildings will be floating in midair. So you need to combine that with a, with a surface. And we recommend using one of the, the terrain surfaces that come from the Ordnance Survey Collection, which we'll talk about in a minute. So Vector Map Local is another product. It's less detailed than Master Map. Uh, it's designed for display at around 1 to 10,000 data. Um, but it's useful for smaller scale projects, so something like at town level, it's, it's a really good data set for that. And it does include contours and spot heights, which you can just make out on that uh, image on the left hand side. Now in terms of height data, I've already mentioned that if you're looking at building heights, you'd want to look at a terrain surface with those, so the buildings aren't floating in midair. Now the Ordnance Survey Collection has got two uh, common products, that are uh, current products I should say which are updated on a regular basis. So they're called Terrain 5 and Terrain 50. Now both of these products comes in two versions. So there's a DTM, which stands for Digital Terrain Model. So that's the surface on which the ground uh, you see out of the window. So it's the surface with everything stripped off it. So with all buildings, trees, things like that. It's just the ground surface. So Terrain 5 DTM, that's the most detailed surface you can get from Ordnance Survey. But it's also provided as a contour data set. Um, which is available in DWG format. Terrain 50 is less detailed, but again, it comes in a DTM version and a contour version. But the contour version, we don't publish as DWG because generally for uh, architect projects, you're generally using uh, fairly small areas. So anything in CAD is generally done over a fairly small area. So we thought Terrain 5 seems to be the product that most people take, which is the most detailed. Also included on this table are landform profile and landform panorama. Uh, which are the precursors to Terrain 5 and Terrain 50. So Ordnance Survey no, no longer update Profile and Panorama as products, but they're still available through the interface. So if you want to look at the, the features as they were in previous versions, they are available and they were available in DXF formats. So just to talk a little bit more about Terrain 5 and Terrain 50, uh, the screen grabs there from CAD products on the left-hand side. So Terrain 50 DTM, so that's the surface, uh, model that you can see. These are uh, ASCII grid files um, and then Terrain 50 below that. So it's the same area that you're seeing there um, but the Terrain 50 contours data set we're just looking straight above it. So it's, we're looking vertically down at the ground whereas the Terrain 50 DTM has been slightly tilted so you can see the effect. So basically the, 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 the core difference between Terrain 5 and Terrain 50 is the detail. So Terrain 5 the contours have a 5 meter interval and the DTM has a 5 meter cell size. Whereas in Terrain 50, the contours are at a 50 meter interval and the DTM has a 50 meter cell size. So if you're, if you're looking at a larger area, say a sort of town or, or local area development plan type environment, then you might want to look at Terrain 50 because it's not as detailed, but it's good for, for bigger areas. If you're looking at small areas, then take the Terrain 5 data because this is the most detailed you can get. <coughs> So I also mentioned there's a whole bunch of backdrop mapping products that are available in TIFF format. So there's lots of other data sets you can add to use to add context to your, your modeling. So I won't go through them all here, but there are a whole bunch of them that are available. Um, the key ones and the key formats are mentioned there. Um, so in, in all, there are 10 different raster products available. Um, the majority are in TIFF format. The aerial imagery comes in JPEG format. Um, and there's a raster version of master map topography. So if you just want to use it for detailed backdrop mapping and want to create your own features on top of it, then take the raster version and pull that into your CAD application. Uh, if you actually want to manipulate the features within master map, you would need to take the vector version and then do the manipulations to that. So there's a whole range of data sets. They cover a whole range of scales, right, from 1 to 1,000 up to 1 to 1 million. 
Now the aerial imagery is a slightly separate category of data. This is vertical aerial imagery from the company Get Mapping, who flew the whole country. Um, it's provided in JPEG format. Again, most CAD applications can read JPEG format. It's been around for a long time. Just be aware, though, that the data is built up from multiple fly dates, so it's, it's effectively a mosaic across the country. But you can see within Digimap when each tile was flown, when each area was flown. You can use the information tool in Rome to click on a map and uh, click on the image and see when that was actually flown by Get Mapping. And within the data download application, you can turn on an availability grid which shows when that area was flown. And you can see the availability grids for each year as well now. So uh, on this image on the left hand side, we've got the uh, aerial imagery from Get Mapping displayed. And then on top of that, we've got the building outlines taken from the master map data set. So um, you can see how closely the two things line up. Um, obviously, the imagery is slightly oblique given that it was being taken at, at a slight angle so they don't match up completely accurately but it's a really really good match so and you can see the detail of the data there as well you can see people lying around the park you can see white lines down the road in cars and pedestrians and things like that so finally the last section of data i wanted to mention is the lidar data and this is our most recent collection um, which is available in digimap we ran a trial of it uh, last year and it's been available for subscriptions from uh, from September, uh, sorry, August last year. It's bundled with the aerial collection, so if you take the aerial collection, you'll get the LiDAR data as well. And there are effectively four different data sets within this LiDAR collection. <clears throat> the first one is a digital terrain model, so we've already mentioned digital terrain models in relation to the Terrain 5 and Terrain 50 products for more than survey. These are uh, available from the LiDAR data collection as well. Um, they're slightly more detailed. They go down to 25 centimeter resolution. So Terrain 5 has a 50 meter resolution, whereas the LiDAR data goes right down to 25 centimeters. Um, and there's a whole range of scales. So 25 centimeters, 50 centimeters, 1 meter, and 2 meter. So all the LiDAR data has better resolution than the Auden Survey Terrain 5 product. But the key difference is that the LiDAR data is fairly patchy in its nature, and the most detailed data only exists for some very small areas. The digital surface model is very similar to the digital terrain model, but the difference being that the terrain model is what you would see if you looked out of your window and you'd stripped all the buildings and trees and every artificial um, uh, surface off the top of the, the, the digital terrain. The digital surface model is what you see when you look out the window. So that includes buildings, it includes trees, it includes any cars that were there at the time it was scanned. So you can use the two data sets together to work out the volume of, of buildings or of trees, uh, forests, things like that. Um, but they're both provided in ASCII format and they have the same resolutions across the two products because one's derived from the other. The raw data that was captured as part of the LiDAR process is what we call point cloud data. So that's the third product in that list there. Um, this is available in LAS format. Um, LAS is a compressible version of LAS, L-A-S. Um, and again, most CAD applications can read this data. It's the raw data that you would uh, capture as part of the LiDAR process. And from that, you derive the DTM and the DSM. And then the final product there talks about ortho photography so when they were out flying and capturing the lidar data the different bodies also captured some um, photography which has been rectified and there's some really interesting uh, photography in there including night um, night captured images so you can see the effects of light pollution um, and also some infrared imagery as well so again where, where, where possible this has been captured and it's available to download uh, through this lidar collection so just to give you a little bit more information, so that image on the left-hand side there, that's the raw point cloud data of the fourth rail bridge up here in Scotland. And you can see the nature of it. So it consists of points in a 3D space, effectively. And it's just been colored up depending on the height uh, of each point. Um, the majority of LiDAR data was captured for flood risk modeling. Um, so it, it tends to follow coastline areas, coastal areas, estuary areas, and also along rivers as well that were subject to flooding. And like I say, the most detailed data, so the 25 centimeter resolution stuff, is only available for very small areas. The, the less detailed stuff that goes right up to two meters, that's available for, for larger areas. 
Um, it does cover the whole of Great Britain, uh, but the coverage varies depending where you are. So around 72% of England's been captured, 20% of Scotland and 70% of Wales. The data is published by the separate bodies that collect it. So in England, it's the Environment Agency. In Scotland, it's the um, it's SEPA, the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency. And in Wales, it's Natural Resources Wales. But what we've done is we've taken all those data sets and pulled them together into a single interface so that you can download the data through Digimap using the common data download application. So you don't have to go around looking for different uh, data from different agencies if your study area crosses the borders of these countries. There is only a downloader for LiDAR data. You can't actually view the data. There's no Roam application for, for, down, for LiDAR data, but you can download it <coughs> quite easily. So moving on a little bit, we update all our data sets all the time. We do try and keep them up to date with the latest available from the different data providers. So our data team are continuously updating the data. We publish a help page on our um, on our system for each of the collections. So here's a link to the Ordnance Survey one and a screen grab of the table. So each of the products is listed down this left-hand side here and the publication date by, in this case, Ordnance Survey and when we last updated it. This table's a little bit out of date now, but um, yeah, the majority of data sets have been updated this year but yeah each of these there's a separate page for each collection that shows you so you can always check how up to date the data is in the system so moving on um, in terms of getting hold of the data uh, it's just the standard data download application that you get to from within each collection in Digimap so here we've got a screen grab of showing how you get to it in the Ordnance Survey collection so you go to Ordnance Survey data download and this will pull up the uh, data download application. Just a quick mention, we do have a beta data download application that we recently released um, where we've updated the look and feel of it. So we would welcome any comments on that if you get a chance to look at it. But the screen grabs we've got today show the original or the current one. So in the Ordnance Survey collection, all the data that's available is available for download. You don't have to download one product at any one time. You can order as many products as you want. Um, and it's a standard three-step process to order the data. So in terms of actually getting hold of the data, you choose your area, so drawing on the on the, a box on the screen, for example. Then in the left-hand panel, where it says step two, select data in here, you select the products that you want to order, so you choose the data that you're after. And then the third step is to just add it to your basket. Once that day is in your basket, you have a number of options, and it's really important at this stage that you choose the right options for downloading the data uh, in a, to, for use in CAD. So just to go through the different options we've got, these are numbered one to four in the basket here. The first one is version. So by default, you will be choosing the latest version of the data that's available, and that's what we pre-populate when you choose this uh, choose a data set but if you want to download a previous version of that data you can select that using the little blue drop down arrow next to the date here and then you get a list of all the versions that are available in the system the second one is format and format is probably the most important one where a data set is available in more than one format this will be left blank and you have to make a conscious decision as to which version you want your data in now if you're using your data in a CAD application you want to choose one of the formats that are readily readable via um, these CAD applications. So something like DWG, which is the drawing format um, for AutoCAD applications, but again, which most CAD applications will read, or DXF, which is the interchange format. Um, yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of formats that your CAD applications will support. If you're not sure, speak to your local site rep or your CAD technician, or have a look at the documentation for your product. Um, but usually there is a data set format in the list for each product that uh, is, is usable in a CAD application. The third option, where it says theme, and you can see for a master map topography layer, we've chosen plan here. This is uh, gives you control over the, the style of map that you're downloading or style of data you're downloading. So it's not available for all data sets. You'll see that uh, three of them in this basket don't have that option available. But for the master map topography layer, this is where you would choose if you wanted to download the full color version or if you wanted to take the plan or outline style. Then the final option in the basket is this layers option here. 
Now, some data sets you can choose not to download the whole data set, but just to take out specific features. So if you're doing an urban infrastructure project, you might be only interested in roads, roads or railways. So you, rather than take the whole data set, you can just ask for roads or railways from that data set. Uh, and, and here you can make that selection. So within the basket, um, you use the drop down, you can choose the features from within there that you want to get. In terms of downloading the data, then the only other steps you need to do are to give your download a name and then press this green request download button. Once we've received your request, we'll send you an email when that data is available for download. Now, just before we go any further, I wanted to just run a quick poll um, <clears throat> to find out what software that everybody's using. So it's, it's really useful for us to have an idea as to, uh, so we can tailor our help information and our support resources so that we uh, know what uh, what applications people are using and yeah so thank you very much for completing that that's really good um, yeah it looks like most people are using CAD and uh, AutoCAD and some other software as well okay thank you very much so in terms of actually using this data how do I use this data so we're going to look at, um, uh, at CAD AutoCAD because it's a, it's a fairly standard product and most sites have access to a site license for it so students can access AutoCAD for free they can download student copies which are valid for three years uh, and they can keep updating those if their studies continue on beyond that so in terms of master map topography layer the two versions we've mentioned already the full color and the plan outline style you can download both of those from data download uh, when you take that data in DWG format, um, the data is stored, the attribute data is stored as X data, extended attribute data, but you can view and query that information. So you click on a feature and see that it's a building or if it's a, uh, an area, the area of a building or if it's a road, something like that. Um, the building height attribute data, as I mentioned before, the buildings are floating in midair, so it's it's a good idea if you're doing 3D modeling with that to take a surface along with that as well, so you can attach contours or a DTM to that. We've done a lot of work recently to ensure that all of our data sets align correctly, so all the data that you get from Digimap is set to use the British National Grid projection, and it uses meters as the unit of measurement. So if you're used to working millimeters, you'll need to adjust the, uh, the properties of the drawing accordingly. But we've standardized this across all data sets that we provide in uh, DWG format as well. So in terms of adding master map to AutoCAD, you've got two options. You can use the DWG format, which makes it really, really easy. You can just open that straight up in AutoCAD. Um, and it includes the default representation set up by OS. So uh, the colors that you see that use the standard colors that Ordnance Survey recommend. But just bear in mind that those attributes are stored as, as X data, and it's not so easy to interrogate that information. If you want more control over how the data is imported and how it's displayed, you can actually import the GML format of Master Map, which is the native interchange format that Ordnance Survey provide. Um, it comes through with minimal representation, but you can uh, sort of use a bit more control over what features are imported, and you can do more information with the attributes as they come through. So you've got two options for importing that data. <clears throat> Another common application is to do 3D visualization. So using the building height data, it's a really good data set to use. So you can really quickly knock up a 3D visualization of an area. So the suggested data sets that you might want to look at are the building height attribute data. Take that in DWG format. Take a terrain surface, either terrain 5 if you're looking at a very small area or terrain 50 if you're doing a larger area. And then any other backdrop mapping uh, as, as you think would benefit your uh, visualization. So it might be the aerial imagery or the master map raster product or uh, one of the other rasters that are available. Lots of applications have 3D modeling built into them. So AutoCAD Map 3D or InfraWorks, they're two, two common CAD applications, but also GIS software, so ArcGIS and QGIS as well have that ability. So here's a 3D model that we created using InfraWorks. We've not done anything to the data other than drag and drop it into InfraWorks. So we've taken the Terrain 50 DTM as the surface, which is what gives us the hills. Um, and this is for uh, the Windermere area of the Lake District. Um, in case you recognize it, uh, on top of the surface, we've draped the um, OS 1 to 25,000 color raster. So you, 
you know, the, the common map that you'd get if you went out and went hill walking. And then on top of that, we've dropped the building height attribute data. So there's our heighted buildings around the area. And you can see they're really, really detailed. And they've come in as nice yellow features. Uh, and this is an interactive 3D scene, so you can you can quickly uh, uh, zoom around and navigate the area and see the impacts of the different buildings on the uh, on the terrain there. So just to cover a couple of recent developments that we've done to uh, help our CAD users, uh, we recently published Terrain 5 DTM in XYZ format. That was in response to uh, requests from some users. As I mentioned before, we standardized all of our DWG data to use British National Grid so that you can combine different data sets from Digimap and they will all line up correctly in your CAD application. And the final two points mention the release of Aerial Digimap and LiDAR Digimap. LiDAR Digimap being our most recent addition to the, uh, the different collections that you can get from Digimap. If you have any suggestions, please do get in touch for, um, via our help desk there. The email address is shown on the screen. If, you, if there's other data sets that you'd like to see in Digimap or data sets that are in there that you want um, more easily accessible to CAD users, then please do get in touch. In terms of help resources and other information, the resource center, which is linked from our home page, so there's a button top right on the home page, and this is really a sort of front end to our help system. Within that, there's a whole series of pages devoted to AutoCAD and how you do some of the common things like build up these 3D scenes, add in data, two different data sets to make sure they overlay correctly. And there's a link to our resource index uh, at the bottom of this page here as well. So there's a little uh, tree view of the help pages that you get um, relating to AutoCAD, so standard CAD, AutoCAD functions, and then some uh, around building up 3D scenes uh, in the Autodesk products. So that's really all I wanted to cover today. I hope that was useful to you. If you do have any questions, please do fire away, and we'll try and answer. Um, otherwise, you'll get an email uh, around this time tomorrow with links to a recording and, um, and the slides as well. But yeah, thanks very much.